Pastor Sonia here. Today I want to share with you how we can encourage the gifts of God in other people. Growing up, I was an average student. I did well in school, but I struggled in the academic subjects like math and science. And because of that, I didn't feel that I was good at anything. It wasn't until somebody saw the gifts that were inside of me and encouraged me that I realized that I had gifts and talents from God. It happened when I was 10 or 11 years old. It was Christmas morning and we had just opened up our presents at my grandmother's home. I was sitting at my grandma's kitchen table, doodling and drawing, and my aunt came up behind me and began to encourage me about my art. She went on to encourage me and tell me if I would develop that gift, that who knows, maybe I'd even be a famous artist one day. Now I didn't grow up to be a famous artist, but those words of encouragement did something for my self-esteem that day. From that point on, I really believed that God had given me some gifts and talents, and I began to develop them. So from that point on, I began to put my heart into my artwork at school. As I grew up, art became a part of who I was and creativity of the things that I was passionate about. And every year when I would go back to my grandma at Christmas time, my aunt was there to encourage me. She would ask me how my artwork was going and she would just be such an encouragement because she saw there was a gift inside me and she believed in me. So many people in this life are gifted and talented, but they've had nobody to encourage them and draw out the gifts and talents that God has given them. We've been reading as a church in 1 Corinthians and we've been talking about spiritual gifts in our, on, in our Bible study. And so one of the things we've been reading, we've been reading in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and in these passages, Paul is talking to the church about some of their insecurities revolving around spiritual gifts. And so Paul wanted to address that there were some underlying wrong beliefs that the Corinthian church had about spiritual gifts. And so one of the underlying un ungodly beliefs that they had is that somehow they believed that they were second class Christians. I'm gonna read in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse one to three, and this was what it says. It says, now about the gifts of the spirit, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagan, somehow or other, you were influenced and led astray to mute idols. Therefore, I want you to know that no one who is speaking by the spirit of God says, Jesus be cursed. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. So the Corinthian church was actually Gentile converts. There may have been some um, Jewish believers, but the majority of them did not grow up in Jewish culture. They didn't grow up knowing about the things in the Bible in the Old Testament. And in many ways, they sometimes felt they were second class Christians to the Jewish Christians. And so Paul addresses it. He points out that you were pagans and he does this not to embarrass them, not to shame them, but to remind them that to be qualified for spiritual gifts, it doesn't matter what background you have. It doesn't matter even for us today. Have you been a Christian your whole life? Have you been to Bible school? Have you studied the Bible from cover to cover? There is no qualifications in those sense of how to receive spiritual gifts from God. The only qualification that Paul says here is that Jesus is Lord. He says anybody by the Spirit of God that says Jesus be cursed and no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. And so I wanna encourage you, maybe you have gifts and talents inside of you that you don't know and you don't believe that God can use you because of your past. You know, Paul addressed this lie to the Corinthian church and he said to him, it doesn't matter that you didn't grow up Jewish. It doesn't matter what your background was, that you used to worship other gods or live a lifestyle that didn't line up with scripture, but it matters who you are now and that Jesus is Lord of your life. And so I want to encourage you, if you make Jesus Lord of your life, that God has special gifts and spiritual gifts for you that he wants to bestow upon you. The second unbelief that they had is they believed that some gifts in the church were more important than others. And this is something that we see inside our global culture because of everybody wanting to be successful and to have a great future, we've made this tier in society that some jobs are better than others, some careers are better than others, and we have this desire and drive in us to be always the best. But that is not how God sees the church. And when he addresses this to the Corinthians, he reminds them that every person in the church is important. It doesn't matter whether your friend has one gift or you have one gift or what your background is that we all have a place in the church. This is what he says. 
in verses 15 to 17. He says, now if the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I do not belong to the body. It would not for that reason stop being part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I do not belong to the body. It would not be for that reason, stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? I wanna tell you today, it doesn't matter your background, it doesn't matter how long you've known God or what you've experienced, that God has spiritual gifts that he wants to bestow upon you. The third ungodly belief that the Corinthian church had during this time about spiritual gifts is that they had actually promoted a culture of dishonor. You see, often when we have competition in the body of Christ, it actually breeds dishonor. And so God has not set up the church to be a competition. As we had just read that every single part of the people and person in the church has value. And when you're not a part of it, there's something that's missing in the body of Christ. And so this is what he says in chapter 12, verses 24 to 27. He says, while our presentable parts need no special treatment, but God has put the body together, giving greater honor to the parts that lacked it, so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Now you are the body of Christ and each one of you are a part of it. And so it's so important that we rid ourselves and our Christian walk and life in the church, we rid it of competition. You see, competition comes out of a place of insecurity. And as insecurity breeds competition, like I said earlier, competition breeds dishonor. You see, when we choose to want to see our brother or sister grow up in their faith and see them excel even in their personal life, we actually create a culture of honor. And so just like my experience, how my aunt saw something very practical, it wasn't even a spiritual gift, but it has had tremendous impact on my ministry. She saw something and she called it out. Can you imagine what the church would be like if instead of competing with each other, instead of trying to be the best or excel or be the strongest or most amazing Christian, that we would actually look to help encourage those that are around us and walking in their faith. Imagine if every person in the church would discover the gifts that they have. How would the world be impacted and changed? And so I wanna challenge you today. When is the last time you've called out the gifts of God in somebody else? Maybe you've been so busy on your journey, trying to excel, maybe in your personal life, you're trying to get your family together, your career, you know, get that home or whatever those goals that you have for your life that you've forgotten that the journey is about bringing other people along. So I wanna encourage you this week to find somebody to encourage, find somebody and take a look and ask God to show you what they're gifted at and encourage that gift in them and help push them on in their faith. God bless you and have a great week.